all and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel in the first place today we have a dobby x reader this is part two part one will be linked in the description so let's go ahead and get into it dobby was back at your little corner store the very next day and then the next and then the day after that too it soon became a common circumstance to see dobby loiter around the store almost always leaving you to pay for the noodles he'd be slurping on usually while he watched in amusement as you'd stock up or clean the store, adding in a you-miss-a-spot every so often with a shit-eating grin on his face. Quitting was starting to sound pretty appealing, yet just as often as he'd be there at your shitty little store, he'd disappear. The first time he had been gone for a week and you thought you were free from him, only for you to see him waiting outside the store right as you came in to start up your shift. Soon, his disappearances were weeks or even a month at a time, and yet he always ended up coming back through those sliding doors with a smirk painted on his face. Today was one of the days he decided to bum off the store, seated behind the counter, though you told him not to go there countless times, and he ignored you each time you did. Huffing, you made it a point to set the wet floor sign down with a loud thunk, after you tossed them off in the supply closet, there was no way you'd let yourself forget it again. Not after the punishment that Dobby himself was, wreaking havoc on your wallet and using you as his source of meals. I'm getting another cup. You didn't bother to hide your growl at his words. He had been eating this much just to spite you at this point. He probably wasn't even enjoying them. This was his third pack today rolling your eyes as you watched him take your water and pour it into the instant noodle cup. This guy really had no respect for anyone or their things, did he? It didn't really matter that he'd always been there when you locked up and followed you to your train each evening after you mentioned the gangs you'd passed. It also didn't matter that despite how you resented the financial strain he was on your wallet, the best days were when he would sit behind the counter with you throughout your shift. It really didn't matter. The beeping of the automatic doors opening smacked you right out of your thoughts, immediately plastering on the customer service smile you had managed to perfect. Despite the foul cursing towards Dobby that was ringing through your mind, hello, let me know if there's anything I can help you with. Your hum was largely ignored by the man, and you held in a sigh, threatening to bubble out. Dealing with customers was so fucking annoying. Get out, Dobby. He stared at you, only putting his feet up on your stool and slyly grinning at your dismay. Rolling your eyes again, you swore your eyes would stay like that from having to put up with this guy for so long. Pushing past him, you settled yourself at your spot on the counter in front of him as the man came back to the counter with just a beer. Anything else I can help you find, sir? How about you give me your number? Beady eyes stared you down raking their way up and down your figure as if he just now noticed you talking to him. You didn't bother to hide the frown on your face. I'm sorry, I'm not interested. It was a bad move. That much was clear, but giving him a fake number wouldn't work. Not as long as he knew where you worked. The hell you're not. I'll ask one time. Give me your number. It definitely wasn't a question at the time. It had been a threat. Your body tensed up at that. The man easily dwarfed you. Hell, maybe his size was a part of his quirk. Fear was starting to set in. Can't you fucking hear? It's a no. A low snark sounded behind you, an arm shooting out in front of you before a lanky body pushed itself between you and the counter. Dobby's typical slouch, now gone, standing tall and staring down the man along the other side of the counter. Call off your fucking guard dog, babe. I'm no fucking card dog. Blue blazed to life in Dobby's hand, and a sadistic smirk pulled its way to his face. But if you get out of the damn store, maybe I won't burn you to the fucking ground. The giant of a man stared Dobby down, but the flame wielder didn't budge, even though the man was easily the size of two of him. The flame in Dobby's hand flared brighter making the man's eyes narrow to your form that had still been obscured by Dobby. This isn't worth it. He muttered, shaking his head as he stormed out of the convenience store. 
the flames subsiding after the man's exit. Letting out a breath you didn't quite know you were holding, and as the man finally left, your posture slumped over. I thought he'd never leave. Dobby trudged back to the chair he had been sitting in, a scowl plastering itself onto his face as he snatched the noodle cup back from the counter he'd had left it on, easily replacing that self-assured smirk he had just had on before the man left. What's with you? Brows furrowed as his chopsticks stabbed at the cup, nearly poking a hole through the plastic. Silence. Dobby, the hell's wrong with you? He had never been like this before. Not here with you, at least. He'd always been so standoffish and even kind of snarky. Now it almost looked like he was pouting. You don't get to go fuck around with anyone else. He hissed slowly, a possessive glint in his eyes. Especially not with scumbags like that. You blinked at that. He was just jealous. Dobby had never even bothered to show interest in you, and after all of this time, all it took was another man, albeit a very creepy and demanding one, to try and flirt with you. Ignoring how your chest had clenched, you scoffed. I do what I want, Dobby, and if I did want to date that man, then I would. Unless there's something you have to say, then you don't get a say in that matter. It was the right thing, right? If he said anything, and that was a big if, then maybe things would be different. Grabbing the beer the man had left behind, you pushed past Dobby to go back into the coolers, until a hand gripped your wrist tightly. Fine. He stood back up, meeting your eye. You're mine. This wasn't a question either, but his silence waited for any objections. Not that you would give him one. Biting your lip, you slowly nodded. Smirking, he took the beer from your hand. Good. The tab clicked open as he pulled you to his side. You're mine. Alright, so that's the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed. There is a part three, but I will not be reading that on my channel. I will leave the link to it in the description. If you would like to read it, you can. That's completely up to you. Otherwise, music link, fanfic link, discord link, and thumbnail art link will all be in the description. I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, whatever, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye!